Good morning folks and welcome to sunny Norfolk. We are off to RAF Marham and the Heritage Centre. Now you might be asking why are we going there and why RAF Marham? It was the base for the tornadoes during the Gulf War and now it's the home of the new fifth generation F-35Bs. This is the RAF Marham Heritage Centre. The village of Marham, right next door to the main gate to RAF Marham, the home of the Lightning Force. So we'll go in and have a look and see what it, uh, what it takes. Looks like RAF Marham was uh, busy between 1916 and 1919 and then reactivated again in 1935 to the present day. It was opened as a night landing ground covering 80 acres, the boundary of the current airfield, and used predominantly by home defence units in the early years. But since the late 1930s, it's been home to bomber and reconnaissance units primarily, with air to air refuelling as an important aspect headlining in the, in the Falklands conflict of 1982. RAF Marham is currently home, and has been home to the GR4s, and now the Lightning Force. That gives you all the different flying units that have been here as well, all the different aircraft yeah. types. Pambra, Valiant, Victor Tornado and f 35 b Interesting. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. What strikes me when I look at these, um, you know, like the, the, the uniform things, they all mm. look as if it was a smaller, well, that was something to be size of getting the aircraft or not, but they all yeah. seem smaller, don't yeah, they? When you they look do. at the yeah. uniforms, yeah. as if it's a society we've got taller, you know. Yeah. Sheepskin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See that up there, look. Oh, wow, yeah. Marham losses. Yeah. Look at that, 1942. Yeah. Goodness me. Goodness me. What we're looking at now is the tally for RAF Marham losses in World War II. Starting 1939 at the left and working year by year. It's quite incredible when you look at it.
find really interesting is this shows you on this map where all the pins are of all the airfields and aerodromes that were in this area, so mainly East Anglia in 1943. Be interesting to put different pins at the side of them now to see how many are left. But yeah. uh, that's a fair few. Yeah, right. Well, this place is fascinating. I did know that there was a very famous RAF unit stationed here, but I didn't know until I sort of walked around here that there was quite a few American units based here as well, certainly post-war. And that to some extent, the Americans took the base over for a short while. But, uh, but obviously now it's fully blown back with the RAF. Uh, but more interestingly, it's also a joint RAF Royal Naval Squadron now. In fact, currently I think the uh, commander of the squadron 617, which is currently out on the Q Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier is Navy led and I think they alternate between RAF and Navy squadron leaders. Um, I think the naval rank equivalent is Lieutenant Commander but uh, yeah this place is fascinating. If you like your history and you like your RAF history you're going to want to come here. It's really good. What I like about this is that when you walk through the doors you set off and it's like a timeline of history. So you set off at World War One, and now we've got to the Cold War and as we go around the corner we head more towards the more, the Lightning and the F-35B. Morning. Hello. Morning. Morning. This is um, the then Flight Lieutenant Dave Waddington's prisoner of war suit from the Gulf War.
Well, that was a thoroughly awesome. It was a real hour. privilege to to have a look around there, to have somebody show us and explain to us all the things that are inside there. It was just, um, yeah, quite moving actually, and yeah. but a real privilege to look around. Yeah. If you're interested in RAF history and uh, or any sort of history of uh, RAF Marham even, uh, it's people, the, the aircraft mm. that flew from here, this mm. is a must. All done by volunteers and it's amazing what people can do when they when they really heart and souls in it, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Definitely. So that's this, yeah. and we've just done a, a very short little video. Yeah. If you've liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Uh, this is part of our playlist of things to do in Norfolk, which is sort of designed to help people who travel here to see what's here and uh, what to do when you parked up with your motor on or your yeah. caravan somewhere. No, it's not all just about seaside and fish and chips. That's There's a lot more to look at as well. That's correct. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.